important. So we've been doing a study on wisdom for those of you who are new with us to today, but we're doing a study on wisdom, okay? So I want you to turn your Bible to the book of James, right? The book of James chapter 3. <clears throat> The book of James chapter three. Now, the wisdom that we've been talking about, it's a supernatural wisdom and it only is found in the word of God and through the knowledge of who God is. OK, now we talked about this worldly wisdom that exists in the world. OK, and th the Bible says, but the, the world by wisdom, what did you guys remember that? Yeah. So the world by wisdom knew not God. So there's what is called an earthly wisdom of this world. And the Bible says that these people became so wise, they became what? Fools. They became fools, okay? So we're not talking about a worldly wisdom. We're looking at a supernatural wisdom. We're looking at an eternal wisdom that is only founded in the word of God and in the Lord Jesus Christ and God himself, okay? So we need to understand this. And so um, before we get started, I'm going to have uh, Paul. Can you pray and pray for Israel? Israel, Paul Barry, stand and lead us in a word of prayer. Pray for our God's people, Israel. The Bible says that, you know, the Bible says that we're to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, okay? And, um, you know, obviously we know that they're our brothers and sisters, and hopefully, you know, the hand of God will be upon them. Go ahead, Paul. Amen. Amen. OK, so so now once again, now the, the concept of wisdom, the Bible says wisdom is the principal what? It's the principal thing. Therefore, with all thy getting, get understanding. So therefore, if you as a child of God have what is called godly wisdom, you know what that means? It means that you're going to live your life according to the will and according to the word of God. It means that you're going to make proper decisions in every aspect of your life. You're, it means that you're going to learn how to interact with people in a godly fashion. If you can possess the very wisdom of God in your life, it will keep you from a lot of mistakes, right? If you can get wisdom right now in your life, it will keep you from doing things that you ought not to do. It'll keep you from making decisions that you ought not to make. It'll keep you healthier. It'll keep you mentally and emotionally more sound. It'll keep you much more wise in the sense of spending money, in the sense of relationship wise. So wisdom is the principal thing. It'll help you in your witnessing and soul winning. We know the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that wins souls is what? He's wise. So wisdom is a key aspect for Christianity that we have to learn to build into our lives because it'll help us in, in every aspect of our life. Wisdom is like a universal joint, okay? That wisdom, that if you have wisdom in your life, it's going to help you at work. It's going to help you at home. It's going to help you to be a good father, a good wife, a good child. Wisdom is going to implement every aspect of your life. It's going to, in, it's going to impact every choice you make, every decision you make. It's going to deal with how you speak and how you communicate with people because wisdom will give you the ability to interact godly in a godly fashion with people in so many different ways and so when we're dealing with this wisdom we have to understand there is a worldly wisdom so let's look at James right and then we'll kind of dive into what we've been looking at so let's go to the book of James chapter 3 and we'll pick it up in verse uh, 13 James 3 verse 13 who is a wise man endured with knowledge among you let him show it of a good conversation. Look at this. His works with meekness of what? Wisdom. Of wisdom. So James is, makes a statement. Who's a wise man? Endured with knowledge. Who, who has somebody ha has wisdom? And who is somebody that has knowledge among you? And let him prove it. Let him show it of what? Good what? Of a good conversation, how he communicates and how he interacts with people, okay? There are a lot of people in this world that possess no wisdom whatsoever. That's why they don't know how to communicate and get along with other people. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever worked at a place where there's somebody, you just have a fool there, you guys know what I'm talking about, and he's always getting in trouble and he's always making a mess, doesn't know how to interact, doesn't know how to get along with other people. Then you may have somebody that is a Christian, preferably, that is wise, that knows how to interact 
interact, that knows how to communicate with people. You have, may have a husband that is wise and he knows how to interact with his spouse. He knows how to interact with his wife because he has godly wisdom. Therefore, he begins to assure her and give her understanding and knowledge. He begins to understand her passions and her desires. He begins to understand every aspect of her. Why? Because of the wisdom that he has from God. Okay? And this is demonstrated in his conversation. In other words, his manner of speech and his manner of life. Now watch this. His works with meekness of wisdom. Notice that a person without meekness cannot and will not possess the true wisdom. Okay? So meekness is an attribute that will have to come before godly wisdom. Okay? Now that's why you're going to see the characters in the Bible, such as David. He was first filled with meekness. Then God gave him what? Then God gave him the wisdom, right? Now let's keep going on. Look at verse 14. But if ye have bitter and envy and strife in your hearts. Now notice what this is dealing with, right? We're dealing with wisdom. But it says, if you have bitterness and you have envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and neither lie against the truth, which is the word of God. Now notice this. So verse 15 is related directly to verse 14. It says, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but it's what is it? It's earthly, sensual, and it's what? Okay, so now we have a wisdom that doesn't come from above, okay? It's what? It's earthly, guys. Did you get that? It's earthly. And then what is the next one? It's what? It's sensual. That means it's perverse, right? It's sensual and it's perverse. And what's the next one? It's devilish. So now we have a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, and it's what? It's evil and it's devilish. That tells me from the word of God that this world is flooded with some sort of wisdom that is earthly, sensual, and it's devilish, and it's completely demonic, and it's evil, and it's ungodly. See, a lot of times we think, well, this person has a degree, this person has knowledge, this person has all these degrees and a doctorate in this and a doctorate in that. Let me tell you something, they can have all of those degrees and they can become so wise, they become a what? A fool. And the Bible says a fool has said in his heart, there is what? There is no God. Corrupt are they. And so look at this, right? Now watch this. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it's earthly, it's sensual, and it's devilish. Okay? Now, look at verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is what? Now watch. Stay, pay attention to this because this is the society that we're living in. We live in a society today where there's envy, where there's strife, and there's what? Confusion. So once you have envy and strife, then you have an avenue of what? Of confusion in every what? In every evil work. This is how the enemy is working. How? He's working through envy, strife, and what? And confusion. Have you ever thought about so many people are just confused all over this world? They don't know whether they are coming or going in this society any longer. Even you have, the Bible says God is not the author of what? Confusion. Well, why do you have, let me think about this just for a minute. Well, why, why are there so many Bibles if God's not the author of confusion? You see how the devil works? The devil works with an avenue of corrupt Bibles and translations to bring in this element of what? Confusion. God is not the author of confusion. You see, so what we have to deal with, we have to understand that what is happening in our culture is right now this whole thing of confusion, and it opens up a door for every what? What does it say in the context, guys? Look at that verse again, right? Look at verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion and what? Every evil work. So where you have envy, where you have strife, you have confusion, and that opens up a pathway of every what? Evil work. That's the culture that we're living in today. There is a pathway because of confusion, because of envy, and because of strife. There is a pathway for every evil demonic work to take place. And what is the root of it? It's a lack of wisdom. It's a lack of wisdom. Now look at verse 17. But the wisdom that is said out loud is what? It's from above. First of all, it's what? It's pure. It's unadulterated. It's pure. Then what? It's peaceable. Okay, then what? It's gentle, easy to be entreated, and full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Okay, so let's just look at this really quick, and then we'll get back to the book of Proverbs. But look at this again. But the wisdom that is from above, it's first, it's pure. Okay, now we know that wisdom is only found in the what? In the word of God, right? And what does the Bible say about the word of God in Psalms chapter 12? He's going to what? 
Come on, guys, purify them. In what? The furnace of the earth. So what did God do? God purified his word in the furnace of the earth. And that's why you have that old King James Bible. There were six translations prior to that. And then on the seventh number of completion, God what? He purified it in the English-speaking language. No other translation is even pure. Now, I want you to understand how this thing works because this is very important that you get this. Because watch this. And so first of all, this wisdom is pure. Then what? It's peaceable. Okay? It knows how to interact with other people. Then it says it's gentle, right? And notice what it says. This wisdom, if somebody possesses it, it's easy to be entreated. In other words, they're just easy to get along with. It's th those are the people that have wisdom. They're easy to be around. They're easy to interact with. They're easy to just hang out with. Have you ever felt somebody like that that has wisdom? They're just easy to be around. In other words, it's easy to be entreated. They're easy to contact. They're easy to communicate with. They're easy to talk to. It's easy to be entreated, okay? Now, watch this, right? Because this is important. Easy to be entreated. And notice the next one, full of what? Mercy and what? Good fruits. We can go into the nine fruits of the Spirit over in Galatians chapter 5, but we don't have time to do all that. And then it says here, it's without partiality and without hypocrisy. So this wisdom, it's not partial and it's without hypocrisy, okay? So now let's turn to the book of Proverbs, okay? Let's turn back to the book of Proverbs, right? Now, and this is where we kicked it off from. I'm going to give you a quick review, especially for the new people that are here, but I want us to see this. So Proverbs chapter 4 in verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. Now notice this, right? So it says here, wisdom is the what? Principal, Principal thing. thing. In other words, it's the most significant thing you can obtain. Okay? Wisdom is the principal thing. Well, Pastor Mike, you say, why is wisdom so important? Because it is literally affects every aspect of your life. If you don't possess wisdom, you're not going to have the ability to witness. If you don't possess wisdom, you're not going to have the ability to interact with other people. If you don't possess wisdom, you're not going to know how to be a good husband. You're not going to know how to be a good parent. If you don't possess wisdom, it, you won't be a good worker. If you don't possess wisdom, you, God can't use you. So God's hand is upon the people that are wise. And listen, the, one of the number one things you should be praying for on a regular basis, Lord, give me wisdom. Now, we've seen from studying this chapter and what we've been looking at is that we've seen that Solomon, remember he asked God for wisdom, God appeared to Solomon, and God says, Solomon, whatever you want, I'll give to you. Solomon didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for long life. He didn't ask for prosperity. He, the thing that he asked for was wisdom. And Solomon says, I need wisdom so I know how to, know how to come in and what? Go out before these great people. Solomon says, I need to learn how to govern. I need to learn how to rule. I need to learn how to interact with my people. God, you put me in a position of authority. You put me in a position of power. And I need to learn how to govern this power with wisdom. I need your wisdom. I need your understanding. I need your ability to interact with these people so I can lead, guide, and direct them in the proper way. That's what wisdom is. That's what wisdom does. Okay? Without wisdom, you won't know how to love your children. You won't. You can love them with a human love, but without wisdom, you won't know how to treat them and raise them without godly wisdom. Without wisdom, you won't understand what it means to be a soul winner because you need wisdom to do that. Without wisdom, a couple can't interact together in a, without godly wisdom. If the man has wisdom and the wife has wisdom, they have the same spirit and it'll connect them and bring them even closer together. See, you young people without wisdom, you know what you're going to do? You're going to make a mess of your life. You'll spend your money because you won't be using wisdom. You'll make a wrong choice and get involved with somebody you not ought to get involved with because you didn't use any wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Now, look at it says. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Now, notice this. Excuse me, exalt her, which is wisdom, and she shall promote thee. Okay? Look at this. If you exalt wisdom, what is it going to do, people? It's going to promote you, right? Now, what did David become? The great king, David. He became the great king because of what? It was wisdom. Okay? That's why you're going to always see in the Bible God's people, right? You know what God does with them? He elevates them, the ones that have wisdom. David became the greatest king in Israel that Israel ever had. Why? And the Bible says that he behaved himself what? 
wisely. When he was 13, 14 years old, he was leading Saul's army into battle. And these men looked up to this young boy because of the wisdom, the, the profound wisdom that was possessed on him. You know, one of the worst things that there is, is for a foolish Christian. And you, you have them out there. They don't have any wisdom. They don't know how to govern their life. They don't know how to interact with people. They don't know how to win souls. They don't know how to literally use the wisdom of God as a parent or even as an adult. Sometimes you see God's people that have been saved for years that possess no wisdom. They have no wisdom. You know what the Bible says? A fool is considered wise when he holds his what? When he holds his tongue. Sometimes we just need enough wisdom just to shut our mouth, <laughs> right? I mean, man. Somebody might think you're a lot more intelligent than you really are if you just shut your trap, right? So, so understand how this works because now we have to look at this, right? So it says if you get wisdom, she's going to what? She's going to promote you. Anyone who possesses a godly wisdom, right, e even in this world, they will be elevated to a position of leadership. They will be elevated to a mark it down. You say, well, why is that? Because God's hand will be upon them. God's wisdom will be upon them. And people will look to those people and say, man, this person is wise. They're not acting a fool. So wisdom, it will promote you. Okay? Now, we've seen this in the life of who? Who else did we look at? Remember we looked at Daniel? You guys remember that, right? Remember what happened to Daniel? Man, Daniel, well, think about it. Daniel was a slave for the Babylonians, right? I mean, and, and, the, and, and Nebuchadnezzar and the other people, they're looking out for somebody who's wise, and they says, there's one here over here. His name is Daniel. He was singled out with his what? With his wisdom. Daniel was a slave in captivity in Babylon, and he was elevated as a great leader because of what? Because of wisdom, right? How about this one? How about Joseph? Joseph was a slave and in prison, and he became the second most important person in all of Egypt. Why? It's because of the wisdom of God was upon him. You see how wisdom works? Wisdom will promote you. It will lift you up. Guys, in the wisdom we're talking about, you can't get it on your own. It only comes from the word of God. Now watch this, right? Look at it says here. Wisdom will promote thee, and she shall bring thee to honor. That's what we've seen with David, with Joseph. We've seen that. And with Daniel. We can go on with different characters, too. Now watch this. When thou embraces her, meaning wisdom, she shall, gi she shall give to thy head an ornament of what? grace now you begin to understand God's grace now you know how to interact with people now you know how to let your speech be with grace seasoned with salt let me tell you something you show me somebody who can't control their speech and I'll show you somebody who's a fool and when I say their speech I mean in every avenue of it now watch this right and it goes on here. Stay with me, right? She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give thee, uh, she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. Now, notice this. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Now, once again, we've seen that performed in the life of David and also in the life of Joseph. Other individuals as well. Look at verse 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be what? Many. Let me tell you something, right? Now, I don't want to go into details. I can go into so many details, but I had a lot. I grew up in a, in a, in a place in Holbrook and where a lot of my friends didn't live with, with wisdom. A lot of them are dead in hell today because they made bad choices after bad choices and bad decision after bad decision, and they lived without wisdom. an awful thing but it's true look at verse 10 again hear O my son and receive my saying and the years of thy life say it out loud everyone you apply wisdom to your life you know what you're going to do you're going to live longer and healthier you apply wisdom to your life you're going to feel a lot better psychologically and emotionally you apply wisdom to your life. You get the wisdom of God. God will give you the ability to lead and to govern your life correctly, to eat correctly, to live correctly, to take care of yourself correctly in a healthy fashion. And the years of your life shall be many. Now watch this, verse 11. 
I have taught thee in the way of wisdom, right? Now, we know we don't have time to get into this. We know Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life, okay? So look at this. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right path. See that? The wisdom will lead you in the right path. It'll help you to follow the direction that God wants you to go in. When thou does thy step, watch this. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight, okay? Straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. See, if you apply wisdom, take fast hold of instruction let her not go look at this keep her for she is saying out loud she's what did you see that so wisdom is life okay if you can build wisdom into your life i'm telling you right now you're gonna live a whole lot better let me tell you something if you pr if you pray and ask god to give you wisdom to give you knowledge to give you understanding on a daily basis let me tell you something in a simple fashion your life will be a lot better I'm not saying all your problems are going to go away, but you're going to know how to navigate through those problems. You're going to know how to deal with those adversities and conflicts. You're going to, you, listen, your problems in this life are never going to go away. There's going to be people in your life that are going to cause problem after problem after problem, but wisdom will teach you how to deal with it. There's going to be circumstances that are going to come your way at work, physically, family-wise. Hey, let's face it, family can make all kinds of problems, right? But you need wisdom on how to deal with those people godly wisdom you see so wisdom is applicable to every aspect of our life it's the most important thing you can get okay it says keep her for she is thy life she's life wisdom is life okay now let's look at this right turn to the book of job okay because this is really important I really want you to uh, retain th some of this information so you can build this into your life on a daily basis. But remember Job chapter 28, right? Job chapter 28. So we have what is called in the Bible the books of wisdom, okay? We have Job, we have Psalms, we have uh, Proverbs, and we have Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon. Those are the books of wisdom. So when, when we go to those books, we're drawing wisdom from God. OK, now Job writes says this here, Job 28, and verse 12. But where shall wisdom be found? It's a rhetorical question, right? Where's wisdom going to be found? Where can I find wisdom? Well, can I find wisdom at Harvard or Yale or Princeton? Nope. Can I find wisdom at, at Notre Dame Academy? Nick Bohr said he went there. He came out of there with not a drop of wisdom. He came out of there just as dumb as he went in. I wish he was here. He went in, he went in dumb as a stump. He came out of there dumb as a stumper. Graduated from Notre Dame. Came out without a drop of wisdom. Now watch this. So where is wisdom going to be found? Are you going to find it in an education? Are you going to find it in a doctorate degree? Are you going to find it in some sort of college? Are you going to find it in some sort of philosophical book? No. You're only going to find it in that King James Bible. <laughs> you won't find it in any other Bible. Watch this. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Now look at verse 13. Man knoweth not the price thereof. Man, you can't buy this thing, guys. You can't purchase wisdom. Listen, you can have, listen, there are many of rich fools in this world. We mentioned that last week. You've got Bill Gates. You've got all these rich, the Obamas. We can go down the line of, of rich, wealthy, educated people, right, that are absolute fools. They have no wisdom. They're fools. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they. Look at this. Man knoweth not the price thereof. So you can't buy it. You can't earn it. That's why the Bible goes through this whole thing about rubies and emeralds and, and great precious stones can't be compared to wisdom. Now watch this. It says, neither is it, say it out loud, what? <laughs> Some of you guys, look at it. It says, it says, neither is it found where? <laughs> guys, you see that? This wisdom isn't, it's not amongst this. It's not amongst the land of the living, man. This thing is supernatural. It's supernatural, guys. This wisdom only comes from God. It's the wisdom to understand who God is. It's the wisdom to understand his Bible, his word. 
It's the wisdom to understand God's love, God's grace, God's compassion. It's the wisdom to understand the different, many different attributes of who God is. It's the wisdom to be able to unsolve the seven mysteries that are found in the Bible that most Christians don't even know what they are. It's the mystery. Listen, it's the wisdom to be able to read the word of God and to process it and to apply it in your life. It's the wisdom that you can take the things of God and you can build them into your life. It's the wisdom that will give you the ability to interact with a lost person and bring that person to an understanding of Jesus Christ that's the wisdom we're talking about we're talking about a supernatural wisdom that only comes from God look at man man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living you see that it's not found amongst the land of the living this is a supernatural wisdom now look at Proverbs 14 6 a scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not see that you have people out there that are scorners and mockers, and they can't find wisdom. Why? It's because it's not amongst the land of the living. See, you can, listen, guys, you can build a library. You can get every book in the world, and you could be as dumb as a stump. You could read every book and get all types of worldly knowledge, but that worldly knowledge is what? It's earthly. What else? It's central, and it's what? And it's devilish. You could have every book, you could go to every college and get every degree in the whole world and still be a fool. Because the wisdom that we're talking about, it's not amongst the land of the living. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can't obtain it in any way. It only comes from God. Now watch this, right? So a scorner seeketh not wisdom, Proverbs 14, 6, right? And findeth it not. But knowledge, you say it out loud, is what? Easy unto him that what? That understand. You see that? Now, we know from Romans, 20, Romans chapter 1, verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their what? Imagination. And the Bible says their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools. This was, you see that? So they were running around, oh man, I'm so intelligent, I'm so, I've got a doctor in this, and I've got this, and I've got all this. Let me sell, tell you something, if they don't believe in God, they're a fool. If they don't believe in saving grace by Jesus Christ only, they are a fool. <coughs> by the way, Jesus called people fools all the time, so don't get mad at me. <laughs> Jesus said, to, he even called the disciples, he said, oh, you fools and slow of heart to believe. So the Bible uses that word a lot. So, so now let's turn to 1 Corinthians, right? 1 Corinthians, right? In verse uh, 1. 1 Corinthians, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, all right? I just wanted to review, and then we're going to jump up to where we need to be. But watch this, right? Wh in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the, the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made, watch this, has not God made foolish the wisdom of what? Say it out loud. So God made this world's wi wisdom what? Did you see that? Look at it says, Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, watch this, after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, say it out loud. So the world by its worldly wisdom, what? doesn't know God it knew not God you want to know why because you've got so many fools out there and they tell you oh that Bible is just a book of stories and fairy tales and and you know what God does you know what God does he seals the truth guys read the book of Isaiah chapter read Isaiah 29 read Isaiah 30 you know what God did God says he says that book is sealed let me tell you something. You know what it means when it says it's sealed? In other words, if you don't believe it and you don't accept its truth and you don't have faith, God closes that book to you and you will not understand it and you will not believe it. There are people in this world that God has taken that old King James Bible and he's closed it up even to pastors. And they don't even understand it. They don't understand its authority and its power. To a lost man, you know what God does? Oh, you don't believe that book? You start reading it and you're like, I don't even know what this stuff is saying. Because the natural man, what? Receives not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, because they're what? They're foolishness unto him. If you don't ask God for his wisdom, God will hide the truth from you. And guys, we don't need to go, that, we can go down a whole nother path on that. 
You guys all know the story. This theme runs through the Bible consistently and consecutively. What is it? Every time the people didn't want the truth, God gave them a lie to believe a lie. If you don't want wisdom, let me tell you something, God will hide wisdom from you. If you ask God in sincerity, he will bless you with wisdom. You don't play games with God, guys. You don't play games. I know some of you are like, whoa, I never heard anything like that. Yeah, that's the problem. Because the world is painting a different picture of God. Through the corrupt translations of Bible, through the corrupt preaching and the corrupt teaching, where people aren't teaching the word of God expositionally, and they're not drawing out the nature and the characteristics of Almighty God. That's the problem of the world today. So Job says, where is wisdom? Where is it going to be found? <laughs> It's not found amongst the land of the living, right? Drop down j back there to Job, right? Look at that, uh, 28, and pick it right up there in verse 14. Job is talking about wisdom in the context. Look at verse 14. He says, the, de the depth saith, it is not in me. <laughs> and the sea said, look at this, the sea saith, it is not with me. Look at this, verse 15. It cannot be gotten for what? For gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. You can't buy it, guys. Some people think, well, I'm going to send my children off, and they're going to get this great education. Let me tell you something. You heard me say it before. Education without salvation is what? It's damnation. The only thing this world is doing is trying to indoctrinate people not to believe in that old book. That's what's happening in this world. They're trying to give you the worldly wisdom that is earthly, it's sensual, and it's what? And it's devilish. You even got these Bible colleges out there. They're attacking the authority of the word of God. So look at this, right? <laughs> In verse 16, right? It cannot be valued with gold of Ophrah. That was the most precious gold. You can't compare it to that. With precious, precious onyx and sapphire, uh, uh, or sapphire. Look at this: the gold and the, and the and the and the crystal cannot equal it, meaning wisdom. And the exchange of it shall not be for what jewels or fine gold. You see that? No mention. That's why Solomon. See, Solomon didn't ask for wealth and riches. He knew that wisdom was going to be more important. Now watch this, right? No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom. Say it out loud. Is what, everybody? Yeah. It's above rubies. The topaz of the Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? Now look at this. Turn to Job 32. Nothing like a King James Bible to clear a question up. Watch this. Job 32, verse 7. Job 32, verse 7 and 9. I said days should speak and multitudes of years should teach wisdom. It should, but it always doesn't. That's a historical statement. Now watch this. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty. What does he do? Did you guys see that? So we know that the word of God is the inspired, breathed word of God. So it says the inspiration of who? The Almighty who, who gives it to us. It's God who gives you wisdom. It's God who gives you understanding. How does he do it? He does it through his word. He does it through the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, and then he takes the word of God and he reveals it to you. Guys, the greatest thing in life is to read that Bible. Now, I know some of you sit there and you say, Pastor Mike, why is it so important? And listen, guys, I've, I've been trying to get this across. I can't get you to understand that until you experience it, okay? It would be, for example, if, if we're at a swimming pool and I'm telling you the water's warm, and you're like, ah, oh, it might be cold, and the water's warm, jump in, jump in. Until you jump in, you're not going to experience it, right? Some, some people, I try to bring them to the Word of God and help them to understand how important the Bible is in their family, in their home, in making decisions in life, how important and how universal wisdom is in their life. But I can't get you to understand it until you experience the presence of God in your life. You have to experience this. That's a personal thing between you and God. When you have an encounter with the living God and the Word of God begins to speak to you wisdom and life. 
and then it begins to change the way you think. It changes the way you see the world. It changes the way you interact with people. It changes the way you see yourself. It changes the way you see everything, and it becomes a universal aspect in your life. Now you see things the way God sees them. Now you understand things the way God understands them. Now you understand God's love. Now you understand God's forgiveness. Now you know how to have that love for other people. Now you know how to have that forgiveness for other people. Now you understand the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. Now you can begin to implement the, the nine fruits of the Spirit of God. Why? All based on wisdom. So look at verse 8 again. But there is a spirit in man... We don't have time to get into this. If you're not here, if you're here and you've never been born again, your spirit is dead. And that's why the Bible says you must be born again. The Bible says as an Adam all die. So you need to be quickened and made come alive by the Holy Spirit of God. And then God will begin to give you this wisdom that we're speaking of. Now, look at this, right? So, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty, he giveth them what? Understanding. So it's the spirit of God and the, whole, and the word of God that gives us this understanding. Great men are not always what? Did you guys see that? Now, listen, guys, you had a lot of great people in society, and they were a bunch of fools. President Biden. But anyways, <laughs> we can go, listen, guys, we can go down the whole list. We can go down a whole list of all these people. Position uh, that with political powers, with authorities, listen, with all type of worldly wisdom, with all type of worldly education, worldly wisdom, they're nothing but a bunch of fools. Great men are not always wise. Neither, look, look at this, neither do the aged, look at this, understand what? Judgment. Judgment. Now you got a lot of people out there, you got a lot of old fools. <laughs> Just because somebody's been around a long time, it doesn't mean that they have any wisdom. I'll tell you right now, some of you may have a mom or dad or a grandfather. Let me tell you something. If they're not saved, they're considered a fool in the Bible. See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? It's the beginning of wisdom. That's the foundation of wisdom. The fear of God coming to a point of salvation, putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That is the basis of wisdom. Fearing God. Okay. Look at Job chapter 12, verse 13. Job chapter 12, verse 13, right? Job 12, verse 13. Look at this. With him is wisdom and strength. Him, with God, there's wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. So God has wisdom and God has counsel, right? So we see that. Look at Psalms chapter 51, verse 6, right? Behold, thou desirest truth in the inner parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know what? Wisdom. David says, God, you're in my inner part, you are going to make me know wisdom. So David understood that. Solomon understood that. We can go throughout the entire word of God, and we can determine exactly where this wisdom is found. All right? I've given you those verses. We looked at those verses last week. All right? Then we made a statement here where it talked about the wisdom of making the face to shine. Okay? So turn to the book of Ecclesiastes real quick. Now look at this. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1. Who is as the wise man... And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? All right. Now look at this. Now remember, God blessed his people with wisdom, such as Daniel, such as Joseph. And what could they do? They could interpret dreams. By the way, that's for a different dispensation. If you had a dream last night and you want me to interpret it, I cannot interpret it. You know, I would just tell you, you ate too much pizza and pepperoni. <laughs> and you watched a horror movie before you went to bed. <laughs> that's where your dream came from. Okay, so that was a different dispensation when God would speak to them and unlock these dreams. All right. So look at this. And uh, a man's wisdom maketh his face to what? All right. Now, we talked about this. You remember when Moses went up into the presence of the Lord? Now, what was he doing there? God was giving him the what? He was giving him the Ten Commandments. And when he came down, right, the Bible says that his face what? His face shone. You don't know why? Because Moses went in the presence of God, and when he was in the presence of God, he was receiving the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And man, his face just lit up. It just lit up. Some of you husbands need to get into the presence of the Lord so your wife will look at you and be like, oh. 
But I'm serious. Some of you guys, you laugh, right? But let me tell you something, right? She would look at you different if you were in the presence of God and you came out of that closet and your face was lit up with the very wisdom and the knowledge of God. She would look at you a lot different. And all the ladies said, <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> you can wave your Bibles. <laughs> Preach, pastor. <laughs> Guys, seriously. You know, I know we, people look at this and they say, Pastor Mike, that's not literal. Oh, it's not? It's not literal, huh? You ever see David from the time he was little, man? It says that he come out, his face was ruddy and red, and man, he had a, a great countenance. Study the Bible, guys. Man, they looked at Daniel. They looked at uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, right? They took those three. They said, look at these guys. There's something special about them. They were young kids. They said, there's something special about them. They had the glory of God on them, the wisdom of Almighty God. That's what they possessed. Now, let's deal with this content of this wisdom a little bit more, okay, because I really want you to understand this. So I want you to turn to the book of Revelation, all right? Revelation chapter 4. Now look at this, Revelation chapter 4, right? Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, all right? After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the, vo and, and the first voice which I heard was as it was were of, of a trumpet talking with me. Now watch this, which, which said, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, now watch this, this is John, he was caught up into the throne, right, uh, was, was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. He's in the very presence of God right now. He's at the throne, right? This is not a dream. John was caught up into the third heaven, all right? This is literal, all right? Now watch this. He, uh, and he, that was, he, and, and he that, was, that was to look at was like, like a jasper and a sardine stone. He was just glowing with this is the presence of God. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their uh, heads crowns of gold. Now, we don't have time to get into all that. We're sticking with the thrust of what we're tr developing here. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices, and there were, look at this, seven what? Stay with me. Seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Which are the seven what? Okay, do you guys see that? So John's in the presence of God. He's in heaven. Boom, he's right there. He's trying to explain things, but he's using um, things that you and I would relate to. Okay? When it says it was like a rainbow, guys, this rainbow is far beyond your wildest imagination. When John says it was like the, st the stones, right? They weren't literal stones. The, he was just giving us a, comp a comparison. John is in heaven, right? He's dealing with supernatural things. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? But now he says out of the throne, it was like seven lamps of burning fire. Guys, this isn't the fire that you and I, th that, that you can't fire that you have in your backyard, guys, that you have to worry about going out. But then he says here before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now I want you to turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 because we need to understand this, right? The book of Isaiah chapter 11 because we need to determine what are these seven spirits of God now, okay? We just seen that these seven spirits exist in the presence of Almighty God for all of eternity. These seven spirits were there. Then we come to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 in verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, watch this, we know that's Jesus Christ, and a branch, there's Jesus Christ, capital B, shall grow out of his what? Roots. Now watch this, here's the seven spirits of God. Number one, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. What's the second one, guys? The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge. In the spirit of what? Fear of the Lord. There's seven spirits right there. But notice what the second one is. It's the spirit of what? Wisdom. You know when Jesus Christ came to this world? He came in the fullness of the wisdom 
of Almighty God. You want to be a follower of Jesus Christ? You've got to possess wisdom. You know what scares me, what really bothers me? Now, some years, I'll tell you a hundred times, I love you. I'll do anything for you. But you chose not to build wisdom in your life. And that's why you're having problems maritally. That's why you're having problems financially. Some years, that's why you're having problems health-wise. Some of you have not gone through discipleship one, discipleship two. You refuse to get wisdom. And you know what you do, some of you? Some of you have been hanging out with a bunch of jerks on the street. Listen, I see it on your Facebook stuff. I'm like, why is he with these jerks? The Bible says a companion of fools shall be what? Shall be a fool. Wisdom is the most important thing you can get. It comes, pay attention, from the very throne of Almighty God. It comes from the very throne of God. It's not amongst the land of the living. Some of us don't even have enough common sense to stay away from certain people in this world. Some of you men don't even know how to interact with your spouse. Some of you people go to your work every day, and man, you're complaining about this, you're griping about this, and you don't even know how to interact with your boss or your coworker. And you find yourself not applying wisdom and interacting with vice within its walls. Wisdom comes from the very throne and the very presence of Almighty God. It's not found amongst the land of the living. It's not found in any other Bible. It's only found in the authority of that King James Bible, that 1611. You can't buy it. You can't earn wisdom. Let me tell you something. You can get all types of educational things, and let me tell you something, and still not possess wisdom. Some of us have been spending our money unwisely. I won't mention his name, but we were talking to one guy one time. Hey, how much money did you spend on weed in the last, in the last 10 years of your life? And we tried to count it up. It was well over $200,000, something ridiculous like that. I said, um, now just imagine with a hypothetical. <laughs> imagine having all that money in a bag right now. Should have seen the look on his face. And how about this? And imagine, how about having the brain cells back too, right? <laughs> how about having the brain cells back? Guys, without wisdom, we destroy ourselves. We destroy ourselves. Homes have been destroyed. Marriages have been destroyed. Minds have been destroyed. Health has been destroyed. Without wisdom, we ruin everything. God's wisdom teaches us, guides us, directs us, helps us to make proper decisions and proper choices. God's wisdom helps us to communicate in a godly fashion. God's wisdom, it's not found amongst the land of the living. It comes from the very throne of God and only the very presence of God. When Moses was in the presence of God, he came down, his face, what? Man, he shone with the very glory of God. Did you know Adam and Eve, before they sinned against God, did you know they had the glory of God written all over them? And they shone. What happened after they sinned? They were what? They were naked. Guys, the wisdom of God, it'll clothe you. It'll build you. It'll strengthen you. It'll encourage you. It'll lead you. It'll guide you. It'll direct you. It'll, it'll literally promote you wherever you go. Therefore, with all thy getting, get understanding, get wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him what? Ask of God. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are. We pray that your hand would be upon the service. Thank you for everyone that's here. Lord, I pray for these, these men, women, children, that you'd bless them with wisdom, Lord. Everyone in this church, give them wisdom. Help them to learn how to interact. How they don't even know how to love without wisdom. Because wisdom is the essence of love within itself to understand. They won't know how to communicate without wisdom. They won't know how to interact. They won't know how to live. 
They won't know how to govern their lives without wisdom. I pray, God, that you give everyone in this room wisdom. The wisdom from on high that comes from the very throne of Almighty God. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for everything in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Guys, if you hopefully you